Please be seated. Crucify him. Crucify him. Away with him. Away with him. Crucify him. It is a fearful thing to sit here at the foot of the cross with those words echoing in our heads. How could the crowd who just five days ago greeted Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem by shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the Lord, even the King of Israel. How could that crowd have turned so suddenly and so completely against Jesus? If we're so inclined, we can think of lots of reasons. Maybe as he rode into Jerusalem and they saw him as their king, They thought that he would come with an army to chase Rome from their homeland. And when he didn't live up to their expectations of who God would be, they wanted nothing more to do with him. It may be that when the Roman authorities and the chief priests and the scribes who were collaborators with Rome and part of the temple system which oppressed and dominated people in that time, when they voiced their opposition to Jesus, it became too dangerous to speak out on his behalf. Perhaps they were afraid that if they didn't go along with the crowd, they would be singled out and lose their position, their status, their rank in that society. Perhaps they were afraid that Rome would see them raising their voices in support of this one who was being called the king of Israel, and they would find themselves sharing Jesus' fate. No matter what the reason And no matter how hard we try to understand what was happening in that moment, it is still jarring and difficult to hear those words, crucify him, crucify him, away with him, away with him, crucify him. It's even harder to say them. Every year about this time, there's a conversation that happens in clergy circles wondering whether or not we should ask the congregation to say those words as we read the Passion Narrative. And there are people who advocate taking that role away from us so that we don't have to feel that burden. After all, we weren't there We didn't wield the hammer or hold the nails. We're not the ones who crucified Jesus. So why are you making us say these words? I think that those conversations are misguided. Because the point of this exercise is to hear those words in our own mouths to feel the discomfort and the pain and to sit in that moment and know that we, we are complicit in Jesus' crucifixion. If Jesus' crucifixion were just a historical event that happened one time, some 2,000 years ago, it would be a powerful story and it might have been told for a while. But because this story resonates so deeply with us and moves us into a place that we spend a lot of our time avoiding, this story has a power over us power that has brought all of us here to this space together. If we are inclined to deny that we, our participants, are culpable in Jesus' crucifixion, 
then we risk assigning blame for that moment to someone else. And we can't sit here in this place having heard these words without acknowledging that this passage has become the root for an anti-Semitism that lingers and seems to be flourishing in our midst today. If we decide that it wasn't us and it was the Jews who crucified Jesus, then we are falling into the path of empire, the path of oppression, the path of exploitation. We participate in Jesus' crucifixion. In order to see and understand that point, we have to recognize that Jesus' crucifixion wasn't a single event on a singular day at a point in time some 2,000 years ago. We need to recognize Jesus' crucifixion as an ongoing event, something not bound by time or geography. If it weren't so, we might not gather every year to recognize this moment and to place ourselves in this spot. Jesus' crucifixion is an ongoing event. Every time we side with empire, every time we turn our backs on the needy, and the poor with whom Jesus spent the majority of his time, every time we participate in systems that exploit people and diminish and dehumanize them, we are participating in Jesus' ongoing crucifixion. We are called in this moment through our participation in this reading, to speak those words out loud, to feel the discomfort, and then to recognize and identify the places where we have failed to respond to Jesus' call, where places where we have failed to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. Because in those moments, we are wielding the hammer and holding the nails. I'm sure that feels shocking. It feels hurtful to hear it put quite that way. But that's why we're here. We are here to recognize that Jesus died on the cross because of our sins, not because of the sins of people who lived 2,000 years ago, confining that event to that moment, sells it short and robs it of its power. Jesus dies on the cross at our hands because that's the way we treat and deal with truth tellers, people who call us to a deeper love, to a way of being in the world that upholds the weak, that restores the marginalized to community, that makes sure that everyone has what they need for human flourishing. That is the life to which Jesus calls us. And in this moment, we need to recognize and acknowledge the moments where we fall short of that life. Jesus hangs on the cross before us today. And there's an old hymn, one that we won't sing today. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, it makes me wonder. It makes me wonder. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? The answer to that question is yes. We are here. We are sitting at the foot of the cross together. 
Amen.